praise the Lord on today. Lord. We're not going to belong to time. Super Tender putting all this on me today, but Super Tender, we're going to hear a word from the Lord. Yes, yes. But what we want to hear a word, I'm doing some teaching on today. Go ahead. All right. And what I'm teaching on, because I, you know, I was going through the word and I was studying this week, but this is where I end up with. Right. But today we're going we gonna to teach on being a committed leader. All right. come on, come on. Don't think that leaders are just the one that sit up in the pool of come on, come on, come on. or stand behind this podium. Right. But being a committed leader. All right. Leaders are people who influence others yes. to think, to feel, or act in certain ways. All right. I am so enthusiastic about the new generation now yes. of leaders in today's churches. Right. We find excellent leadership representing all the generations. Yes. Yes. We don't just focus on an age group. But we find leaders that focus on every age group. Yes, yes. Men and women of great integrity are given effective leadership in all walks of life uh -huh. and in all disciplines. Yes. But many churches and organizations, they are hungry mm -hmm. to find new leaders, to find good leaders, to fill their pool of right. and leadership positions. At times, there seems to be a shortage of qualified leaders. Uh -huh. See, a leader is not just bringing the word. That's right. That's right. Anybody even sitting in the audience can bring the word. My grandkids can bring the word. All they got to do is study the word. The scriptures are filled with models of good and bad leadership come on, come on. from great men like Abraham, like Moses, like Paul, like Peter mm -hmm. to the wicked kings right. of Israel and traitors yes. like Herod and Judas. Yes. We find leaders mm -hmm. with act of persuasion uh -huh. like Jim Jones uh -huh. and Adolf, Adolf Hitler. Come on, come on. All kinds of leaders. Oh, yeah. But leadership is not something a person volunteers for. Okay. It's for a person that is chosen. Yes, yes. A leader's influence yeah. can be used to build and lead organizations and movements mm -hmm. that can help change the world. Yeah. A committed leader will not allow their ego to grow large. Come on, come on. Speak now. Too large causing themselves into deep trouble. Ethically yes. immoral. Mm -hmm. Causing devastation to their followers. Uh -huh. These leaders place a dark smudge on the reputation of the church. Come on. Yes. Of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Yes. And like we need to be careful when we embark on the leadership journey. Uh -huh. We better know what we are asking for. Yeah. Yeah. See, the Bible tells us a man or even somebody that desire the office of a bishop is a good thing. Uh -huh. yes. Yes. And it go on down. We, we had that in Bible study, Sister Thomas. Amen. That it's, it's, it's things and rules and qualification that you got to go through. Uh -huh. It's all right to want to be. But James 3 and 1, James 1, not many of you sure presume to be teachers, uh -huh. my brother, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. Amen. Uh -huh. That's it. Amen. You're going to be judged more strictly when you desire the office. I'm talking, I'm talking about everybody but I want to bring the bishop in because that's what the word and also the deacons in because that's what the word of God says. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. And Luke 12 42 through 44 and verse 48. 
from everyone who has been given, much will be debated. And from the one who has been entrusted with much, much more will be asked. Amen. Just being a leader is just not sitting up in this podium and saying it. Uh -huh. Being a leader is not sitting over there with a big hat on. Come on. Come on. Being a leader is much more. See, much is required when you are a leader. You just can't come and open the doors and think that's it. Because you got different ones and different peoples, all kind of people on your hands. Okay, that blood is on your hands. God gives Increase ability when we need it. Yeah. The empowered leader is utterly aware of his need to depend on the Lord constantly. Uh -huh. To depend on the Lord continually. Oh Regardless of how you become a leader mm -hmm. or how far along you are on the journey, yes. God can use you to advance his purpose in your life yes. and in the lives of those you lead. Uh -huh. In Samuel 13 and 14, mm -hmm. when Samuel came to Bethlehem, after Jesse and his sons were looked over one by one, uh -huh. Samuel had confidence that one of Jesse's sons would be king. Uh -huh. But the one before him was not God's choice. That's it, that's it. That's it. Samuel should have learned from his experience mm -hmm. with Saul that the outlay is not nearly important than the inner man. Uh -huh. God looks on the inside. Yes, Come on. Yes. Samuel 16 and 7. God judges the heart as men look at the outer appearance. That's right. That's right. A committed leader involves devotion yourself to a group of people mm -hmm. to accomplish great things yes. for the Lord that you could never do alone. Yes. You can't do it by yourself. Yes. You need the Lord in order for you to accomplish what the Lord have for you. Uh -huh. Okay, the question is, what does it take? Mm -hmm. First, obedience. Mm -hmm. Israel having rejected God as king mm -hmm. made a poor leadership decision. Mm -hmm. Insisting on having a human king like the nation around them, uh -huh. so they chose Saul. Right. Oh Appointed Saul over Israel Brought serious consequences. Mm -hmm. Saul presumed he could lead Israel right. according to his own inclination. Right. Right. A clear disobedient of God. Mm -hmm. A committed leader. Right. Mm -hmm. On one occasion, Saul's disobedient called him not to wait on Samuel. God rebuked Paul, Saul, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. through Samuel. Samuel told Saul, you did not keep God's commandment, yes. and you did not obey him. Yes. Therefore, your kingdom will not endure, right. and it will not stand. Right. Samuel told Saul, the Lord has sought out a man after his own heart, mm -hmm. and have appointed him a leader over his people. You can read that in 1 Samuel 18, 13 through 14. Don't get ahead of God's leading. This is the second. The first one was obedient. Uh -huh. The second is don't get ahead of God's leading as you seek his wisdom mm -hmm. and making the right decision. Yeah. Yeah. Seek for wisdom to guide you. Acknowledge him in all things. Yeah. And he will direct your path. Yes, yes, the third 
You have to have the heart of God. Yeah. You have to have a heart, having a heart for God. Yeah. What was so special about David that God should choose him? Not because he stood up to the lions. All right. Not because he stood up to the bears. All right. Not because he stood up to Goliath. Come on, come on. He was given strength to lead because God saw him that he had a heart for him. Come on, come on. Yes. Yes. You got to be faithful. You got to stay on the battlefield. Yes. You got to endure disappointment. Yeah. Yes. You got to endure to the end. Yeah. You got to stay in the word. Yeah. And you got to walk in the word. Yeah. All of this going to come when you are a committed leader. Yes. Yes. Number four, faithful. Mm -hmm. You got to be faithful. Yes. David well, pure, simple faith. Yeah. David's faith in God enabled him to care for those sheep faithfully. Uh -huh. You got to stick to what you believe uh -huh. and don't give up. Yeah. It don't matter how much or what comes your way. You got to stick to what you believe. Yeah. And what you believe is the word of God. And 1 Samuel 16 and 7, the Lord said to Samuel, don't judge by David's appearance or his height. The Lord doesn't make decisions the way you do or the way you look at the city. You can look on the outside and say, oh, okay, okay. You can hear somebody talk and say, oh, okay. But that is not what God does. People judge by outward appearance. Uh -huh. But the Lord looks at a person's thoughts and he looks at their intentions. Yeah. All right. All right. See, none of Jesse's songs, all seven measured up. We don't read that story. They did not measure up, not none of them. To Samuel, they seem excellent. Mm -hmm. Candidate of God's lead. Mm -hmm. But God rejected. All of those men. Yes, he, he was on the lookout for that certain special quality of heart mm -hmm. essential for effective leadership. Yes. Yes. The very son, the very son that Jesse thought was least qualified, hey, was the very one God had in mind. Oh, when people think that you are less, yeah. you just keep on praising the Lord. Yeah. You keep on praising. Yeah. The one that they thought was nothing is the one that something. Again, we see how those who do not seek for leadership are often the best qualified to lead. Yes, yes. Just keep trusting in the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. You ain't even look, got to be looking for nothing. Yeah. But see, God sees. Yeah. God sees your work. Yeah. God sees what you're going through. Yeah. God sees your struggle. Yeah. And through everything you continue holding on, God sees. Yeah. Being a committed leader. Yeah. Number five Jesus. is patience. Mm -hmm. David had what it took to do the task. But he had to wait to begin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, the Lord already had chosen David. Uh -huh. All right. And when the Lord already chooses, you don't worry about what comes your way. Come on, come on. Because it's not your time. Yeah. And it's not your season. That's yeah. it. David knew he had been set aside mm -hmm. by God to be a king. But he was patient mm -hmm. and willingly served in Saul's court. Yeah. In order to be a good leader, you have to be a good father. Yeah, yes, hey, yes, if you can't follow, you cannot be a good leader. How in the world 
can you lead somebody when you don't even want to follow nobody? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Ha! Yes. Ha! Yes. I remember a time. I didn't even think about the job that I had got. All right. I had been on that job ever since 1993. And I started off as a food service worker. And I worked, I guarantee you, I worked about 10 or 15 years. Then I said, okay, I need to make some more money. Mm -hmm. I didn't complain, I kept doing the job. When didn't even think about the job. All I wanted to do is, you know, just like we just go to work, get your money, and go home, pay your bills. <laughs> so after so many years, I, became, I said, okay, I want to be a correction officer. Mm -hmm. So I went on. And, and, and went to BCOT and became a correction officer. All right. Then I said, after I done became that, I wanted to be a manager. I made a manager. Uh -huh. They had an opening. By the time I, you know, had an opening, and I applied for that job, and I got that job. All right. Within less than two weeks. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to keep my certification. Yeah. Then in 2011, mm -hmm. See, when you ain't looking for nothing, see, I know it when I'm out for the Lord. Yeah. 2011, Superintendent Jones, he needed a district missionary. Uh -huh. And I began to start telling the Lord, Lord, I can't be no missionary. <laughs> but you know, that's what I told the Lord, I can't be no missionary. He had asked me, I said, you know. <laughs> I, I'm gonna just show you. I can't be, be no missionary. I, I never asked for the job. Yeah. But the Lord knew on, yeah. in 2011, I was blessed with the food service director over every kitchen. Come on, and I was blessed. I said, the Lord knew what I needed yeah. in order to be a district missionary. Come on. He knew what I had to do. He knew exactly what I had to do. So the Lord blessed me with that. Yeah. I didn't realize it until I was sitting home one day. Yeah. And I said, Lord, while I'm wondering and while I'm worried, you are ready to work You are ready to be. Yeah. Yeah. A committed leader causes, I'm sorry, a committed leader carries the burden of the men. Yeah. Yeah. Paul wrote of this in Galatians 6 and 2. Carry each other's burden. Yeah. And in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. Yeah. The Bible said, no weapon, Isaiah 54 and 17, that form against thee shall prosper. Yeah. A committed leader will not give up. Yeah. He will not give in. Yeah. Things will come your way to shake you. But let me tell you, when it comes to shake you, it's going to make you. Come on. If God is for you, he more than the world against you. What will happen as a committed leader if we will start praying? Come on. See, prayer is a conversation of the heart with God. Through prayer, we align ourselves to our Creator. Uh -huh. And in His presence, is revealed to us. Yeah. Our lives are changed. Mm -hmm. To be a committed leader, you got to have a prayer life. Uh -huh. yeah. Because the reason you got to have a prayer life, because you got to be able to see yeah. what you don't see in the natural eye. Come on, come on. You got to be able to see in order to make a decision with anyone trying to make you make the decision. Come on, come on. A committed leader is not programmed to see what I want them to see, but they are programmed to see what God wants them to see. Come on. Being a committed leader. You got to be able to disperse out encouragement. Mm -hmm. Encourage with attention. When crisis comes, you got to be a committed leader. Uh -huh. When a job is well done, you got to be a committed leader. Yeah. 
When they do porn, you got to be a committed leader. Come on, come on. Wherever, whenever there is an opportunity, uh -huh. yeah. you got to be a, a committed leader. And what I mean about that, you got to know how to encourage. Yeah. You got to know how to encourage. Yeah. Each individual, each individual is different things for each individual. Yeah. But God don't have no respectable person. Uh -huh. So since he don't have no respect for person, mm -hmm. that leader cannot have a respect for person. Mm -hmm. But there are things that's in the church that you got to deal with different wars than you do with us. Right. And when I say he don't have respect the person, he got to love each and every one. Mm -hmm. But since we are different and we are we have different goals, he got to deal with us in different ways. Wait. Yes, yes, yes. Right. Being a committed leader. Yes, yes. And I'm going back to patient again. Mm -hmm. When things don't happen the way we think it should happen, mm -hmm. we want to give up. Yes. All right. We want to throw in the time. Uh -huh. It's not the time. Yes. That's why you got to have an open ear and an eye to see so you can hear what the Lord is trying to tell you. So you can see what the Lord is trying to show you. Again, we got to seek for leadership from the Lord. Yeah. Let God choose you. Yeah. It's all right to be wanting something, yeah. but let God choose you. Yeah. See, David was chosen. Uh -huh. See, it don't matter what Jesse thought, his father. Right. It don't matter what Samuel or Saul thought. Yeah. It was all what Jesus had, what God had chosen. Yeah. See, all you got to do, serve the Lord, love the Lord, do what the Lord say, be obedient, and God, He will open doors. Yeah. Yeah. He opened doors that no man can close. Right. Yeah. Yeah. If it's not for you, just keep holding on. Yeah. Just keep holding on. You can't get upset and say, okay, I'm going to quit. Mm -hmm. I've been wanting to quit in many times. I want to give up. Yes. But I thank the Lord that the Lord, the Lord showed me yes. Come on. it's not about people, but it's about where I want to take you. Come on. And I thank the Lord. Yes. It happened in times I wanted to throw in the towel. Yes. But so I, by the time I get it out of my mouth in the next three minutes after I got through sobbing, the Lord said, I called you. Yes. Being a committed leader, play my script. Yes. Yes.